Alright, hello and good evening everybody and welcome to Gaming News and Discussion with the Wall and Koga. Freaking right! Freaking right! Okay, so as you can see on the above, we have tonight's plan, uh, except I'm missing one. <gasps> mm, Alright, we have to add that. Add text. And uh, I think I used this, and we're adding top 10. And we're doing that at number 5 instead of the other number 5. Giant Wall, hello, Sal, Harley, and Faye. How are you doing tonight? A giant wall appears. Yes. Just appear. Out of nowhere. Well, I wouldn't say that. No, you wouldn't. Would you? Would I? Would you? Yeah, we're calling a would I. You're a would I. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Alright, and we have to add that as number six instead. I know what you are, but what am I? Do you really want to know? Yeah, because I have nachos. <laughs> you have nachos. Okay, so the schedule for tonight is recap of this week, news in the gaming world, next week game releases, Nostalgia review, top 10, and future plans. And we'll dive right into the recap of this week. What uh, the fuck have we done? Uh, what have we done? Uh, we have uh, completed Bomb Village and uh, put down the foundation for the city. Yeah. So, the Bum Village external part is done. Hello, pizza! So, that's... That's that done completely, but what were we going to do next? We were starting uh, on the market part, market. weren't we? Yeah. Yeah, so we have started on the market part as well, which we will continue. Uh, otherwise, I have been playing Randall's Monday, which is a fantastic game, by the way. Which I will review uh, on this uh, spot once where once I'm done with it. That's also a part I'm going to add reviewing a completed single player all multiplayer games that we have played. So, but yeah, that was a great game uh, so far. So hopefully it will keep like that. Otherwise, there has not been nothing much going on, really. Same old, same old. Yeah, mostly. So let's go over to the news in the gaming world. And let's go with the screen capture. And we need to do this one. Okay. To skip. So. Alright, so the first one Dragon Age Inquisition install size, next gen graphics, and settings revealed. We're just a little over a week from the launch of Dragon Age Inquisition now, and more information trickles out on a daily basis. Brian Johnson, who works in the Quality Assurance Department of Bioware, Ed of Bioware Edmonton, answered a lot of questions on the subreddit and we reported them below. First of all, he addresses a topic which is quickly becoming a concern for some new gen users. The install size of Dragon Age Inquisition, once again, PlayStation 4 and Xbox versions would require a lot of space, almost double that of the PC version. <laughs> Jonsson also explains why. <laughs> why? PC is about 24GB, varies within 2GB depending on German, French or English voiceovers. Deluxe Edition adds about 100MB. Next gen consoles takes between 40 to 46 gigabyte install size, with between 5 to 7 gigabyte of uh, initial install. Xbox 360 8 gigabyte installed, PS3 6 gigabyte installed for disk, and I believe 19 gigabyte for PSN. Uh, number one on console there is generally less skews. 
so you have the generally more than one language on the disk so for example the Europe, Europe version of uh, PS4 has German, French and English for voiceovers each of these takes up about 2 gigabytes or slightly more PC by default we will only deliver one voiceover language to cut the download size and disk install okay. yes the bigger reason PC still promote live DVD 9s in disk form whereas next gen can go up to 50 gigabytes with you a layer view race so one disk is approximately six disks so data size is actually harder to come by on pc there's two different primary data formats on frostbite each giving their own benefits the pc version has smaller on disk size at the sacrifice of a bit of load times these load times can easily be negated by using a solid state drive or simlinking.cas formatted file onto a usb drive or a ssd which is well established be a four trick this is more continuation of two, but for games it's pretty difficult to find some sort of packaging solution that can fit more than four discs these days. The old double-sized spindle cases are pretty much out of existence in terms of manufacturing. Alright. He also added that PS PlayStation 4 and Xbox One graphics is comparable to high settings of PC and won't, water won't look quite as good on consoles. <laughs> Well, you know. Next gen is mostly on high, water won't look uh, quite as good, but the game is definitely comparable, at least to my eye. Finally, he clarified that he's using Battlefield 4 on PC as a benchmark for Dragon Age Inquisition helps somewhat. Bioware's upcoming RPG has a higher threshold, implying that it will be a um, bit more demanding. You can't use BS4 as a reference, you can use it uh, to ballpark you. Uh, but you can't use it as this is it. Now that is true, Dragon Age has a higher max threshold as B4. For those of you who can't resist anymore, tomorrow the reviews embargo will be lifted, but be careful of spoilers around the web. Spoilers! Yeah. Alright, but uh, Dragon Age Inquisition sounds interesting enough so far. Uh, this only adds to it that uh, they actually can confess to having slightly worse graphics on consoles than uh, than on PC. Well, that's not a, not a shocker there. No, it's actually as it should be. Alright, GTA 5 first person mode ca car crash gif is truly horrifying. Info about radio stations and more leaking. <laughs> leaking of radio stations, really? Alright, um, GTA 5 retail versus seems to be out in a while thanks to a few stores breaking the street date and selling the game early. Since then we've seen plenty of videos leaked and gameplay streaming. Why is no chat being shown? It should be. Thank you DLSP123 for the follow. Why isn't the chat showing? It should be shown. Yeah, it's showing. Ah, oh, here we go. And okay. Now it seems like it's bugged. Sorry. There we go. Now it's loading at least. Alright. Uh, where was I? Uh, these new videos has confirmed a lot of things as well as shown some new one. Uh, take a sample of car crash in the first person mode. If we crash our car in first person mode, we can actually see the whole flying through the windshield moment in first person. It definitely looks a scary moment, more so in first person mode. Check it out below. And I have the GIF right here. Ooh. I'm liking it. I want to see the crash. Yeah, that, that looks quite horrifying actually. I like it. I like it. You love it. You know you do. Yes. In addition to this, check out the stuff that has been leaked so far regarding, regarding this new remaster. Neon kits. You can attach neon underglowers to your car. Well, not a new thing for GTA, but f nice that I've added it. Yeah. New BOS button cinematics. Alright. Kenny Lodgins in Famous Danger Zone has been added to the radio stations that he already hosts, Los Santos Rock Radio. Uh, mm -hmm. The vehicle that came out with the DLCs are back and spawn regularly, parked or driven by NPC. The game menu where the map settings are has a completely different font. Personally, not fond of, alright. I 
can't say I could care less. <laughs> Not really bothered? No. Wearing tinted sunglasses in the first person changes the color of vision the col to the color of the tint. That's nice. Uh, that's... That's a big plus. That's a big plus, sir. And this one's big. New characters spawn actions incidents. I play GTA 5 mostly every day since it came out and never saw the saw the one in the live stream. What? Realistic games! Ah! <laughs> I handled a lot better. I was testing it last night. Nice. No let's play. Hello, how are you doing today? Alright, here's a list containing some of the new songs. Not going to go through that. Protagonists now have personal vehicle icon on the minimap, just like GTA Online. That's nice. And the game map has a different look in the menu, as if it's morphing with uh, GTA 5's map. The minimap edges has been cut to add some minimalistic translucency to it. Also nice. Until now, the only new textures noticed are for sand, grass, obviously, rock, asphalt, cars, if metallic or classic. Or a bit reflected now. Guns also, obviously. These uh, are the ones that I noticed. For your information, textures aren't the same as graphics. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> you don't say! Mmm, <laughs> hot chocolate. Mm, give me some chocolate. It's official that uh, getting projectiled out of your car through the windshield in first person is breathtaking. <laughs> yes, it was. It All right. be abused. Red Dead 5 will officially be released for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One on November 18, 2014. No, let's play. Thank you for the follow. All right, that's actually rather interesting. So, <laughs> next one: Final Fantasy 13 2 available for pre-order coming December 11th. PC uh. system requirements revealed. Square Enix today announced that pre-orders are now live for the forthcoming of Final Fantasy XIII 2 for PC. Uh, Final Fantasy XIII 2 is the second installment in the Final Fantasy XIII series of games to launch for PC and will release on December 11th. <laughs> Will make me hot chocolate? Nah, I'm going to make myself hot chocolate later. Oh, <laughs> fuzz you guys. <laughs> and whipped cream to that. I can whip you a cream, sir. <laughs> you can always whip my cream. Uh, <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah. That's on that. <laughs> it will be priced at uh, twelve ninety nine or uh, pound or fifty ninety nine euro. Well, maybe I will buy it. Maybe I won't. Yeah, but that's not a high price, at least for such a good game. We don't know if it's a good game yet. <laughs> it's thirteen two. I have already played that. It's actually quite good. It's better than thirteen. It has to really make an achievement to be crapper than 13. Well, very true, but still. Alright, um, the game is available to pre-order via the Square Enix store and Steam, with those pre-ordering receiving 10% off. Uh, the PC launch of Final Fantasy 32 includes a number of new features such as 60 FPS support from launch, customizable rendering resolution, 720, 1080 and more. 60 euro what? 60 mm. euro what and what? How much wood can wood chop? I don't know. Uh, and the Japanese voice support with subtitles, which is also nice for those that are, are into that. Square Enix can also confirm that following feedback from fans, the already released Final Fantasy XIII 2 on Windows PC will also be updated in December to include the customizable rendering resolution option. Uh, Final Fantasy 13 2 reveals further world changing events from the Amazing Mythology, us represented in the original Final Fantasy 13, now featuring both familiar faces and new characters. The story of Final Fantasy 13 2 is written in a way that can still be enjoyed without knowledge of the previous title, while serious fans will find plenty of interesting references to the original story 2. The game offers larger, more interactive environments with multiple Pathways to explore and many secrets to find. Like always. Yeah. The recommended uh, recommended stats isn't that high actually. You need to have Windows Vista seven or eight. Yeah. All right. Bye, Sal.
Uh, you need an Intel Core 2 Quad Core or an AMD Xenon X42. Uh, 2 GB of RAM, a GeForce 460 or a Radeon 5870, DirectX version 11, uh, 30 GB available space on hard drive. And uh, it's recommended that you have a game controller. Good. Well, you know. But yeah, it's actually nice that they're starting to port the Final Fantasy games for PC finally again. Yeah. It's about time. Yeah. They already updated Final Fantasy 7 and 8. Mr. Fay, behave. Don't talk about Assassin's Creed. No. Don't spoil it. Don't even mention its name. I'm saving it. Save it. Okay. Uh, next one. Resident Evil Revelations 2 rating reveals uh, playable characters, weapons, and plenty of gore. Wow. Well, Resident Evil game without gore? <laughs> yeah. The ESRB just published its rating for Capcom's Resident Evil Revelations 2 and comes with surprises. The M rating itself with warnings for blood and gore, intense violence, strong language is not all, at all shocking, but the description is a lot more interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, I whacked you on you. my head on you. It hurt. Why did you do that? This is an act... This is an action-adventure game in which players assume the roles of imprisoned women and father searching for his daughter on an island. Players use pistols, machine guns, rocket launchers, shotguns and knives to kill zombies and mutated creatures. Combat is highlighted by screams of pain, realistic gunfire and large blood splatter effects. A handful of enemies are depicted with uh, exposed organs and one scene depicts an en enemy having a hand cut off in slow motion. Another scene depicts a human character shooting herself in the head with a pistol, resulting in a large splatter of blood. The words oh. fuck and shit appears in the dialogue. Nice. Aside from the mention of the guns, we'll get uh, to use against the abominations on the island, which most... What's most interesting is the description of the father searching for his daughter as a playable character. While his identity is not revealed in text, the first theory that comes to mind is that the game will let us play Barry Burton, Moira's father and veteran of the series. Of course, we won't be sure until Capcom makes an official announcement about it, but uh, he seems to be the ideal candidate to fit the role, since his daughter is indeed trapped on the island with Claire Redfield. Sounds nice, actually. Yeah, yeah Resident Evil games are always good. Alright, the next one. The Naughty Dog sequel that you'll never get to play. <laughs> Jack of all trades. It's no secret that prior to starting full production of The Last of Us, Naughty Dog was toying with the idea to return to Jack and Dexter. While the series had been kept relevant by Ready at Dawn and High Impact Games, the Californian developer hadn't actually touched the property since 2005 with its final PlayStation 2 title, Jack X Combat Racing, which sucked. The Speaking of at an IDGA Toronto keynote last year, Neil Druckmann, who went on to write and direct Joel and Ellie's escapade, uh, explained that the planned PlayStation 3 title would take its platforming heroes in a darker direction. We spent a lot of time exploring Jack and Dexter World, how we would reboot it, how we would bring these characters back, some story ideas that we were getting excited about, he said. Unfortunately, the firm concluded that it wasn't necessarily getting hyped about the property itself, but the direction that it was taking it in. We were questioning ourselves what we were doing for this marketing season and naming something Jack and Dexter wasn't really Jack and Dexter, or were we really passionate about it, he pondered. The team eventually went on to make The Last of Us, uh, but plenty of concept art for its gritty reboot was created. As part of its 30th anniversary art book, the company has revealed the direction that it intended to take the series. It shows the act, for example, with much more human appearance, while Daxter resembles an angry rodent with a gun in some images. There are also some drawings of the kind of environments that the characters may have encountered, 
many of which center around lush fancy islands that fuse natural flora with gigantic urban buildings like uh, a little like uh, the reclaimed skylines in the subsequent post-apocalyptic games. Would you have played this reboot the title? Should it have been one made? Speak up in the comment scene below. Yes, I would. I love Yaki and XD games. And the concept art is really good, actually. <clears throat> Alright, I have played Yak and Dexter 1, 2, 3 and uh, Yak X Combat Racing. I am sad to say the Yak X Combat Racing was a complete disappointment. <laughs> Much like always when you play a racing game um, based on a regular game. Yeah. One of the few that I actually made that was Super Mario. Yeah, but that's epic. Mm hmm. It's always. Alright, next is uh, for Assassin's Creed Unity. Current known issues. <laughs> <laughs> Not able to progress past sequence 1, memory free, if you started to play as you would download the game. Frame rate issues, they are working uh. on it. Graphical and collision issues, they are working on it. Matchmaking co-op issues, they are working on it. <laughs> you play service, you play actions and rewards are not accurately listed as below. Uh, they are working on it. You play units does not appear as credited at the moment, they are working on it. You play is working on experience and intermittent connection issues, they are working on it. Some Unite program rewards are not redeemable, comic book and soundtrack, they are working on it. Uh, spin to win, getting error messages, there's a frequently asked questions about that. UV collectibles codes might be invalid when redeemed, they are working on it. <laughs> Compan doing it sir. <laughs> Companion app, progression reset bug, they are working on it. Connectivity issue, also working on it. Uh, lost assassins bug, okay, they that's fixed. Least. Hello Demonite. Hey, what about Mark Plyer's theory on Golden Freddy? Haven't seen that. I didn't see that news article actually. Let me see if I can find it. I will add it to the to the list. Golden Freddy Okay, I have a link for it I think You think so? Alright uh, But yeah, there's a hell of a lot of bugs One, two, one. Ten, twenty <laughs> Yeah, they released this a little early <laughs> Alright, the next one is uh, Exony Engineer left his name inside every PS4. Kazuki Sakahira um, spent 10 years working at the Sony as a senior software engineer, helping bring both the PS3 and PS4 to the world. He's no longer at the company, parting ways early in 2013, but before he left he made sure his name is quite literally lives on inside the code of pretty much every PlayStation 4. <laughs> As you can see here, uh, I have a picture here. Thank you Demon Knight for the follow. As you can see here in this snippet uh, sent in by Chris Galizzi, Sakahira has left his name inside the PS4's HDD code. Now coders leaving calling cards is nothing new, it happens all the time, but usually left in the comments part of the where humans leave human messages for other humans. And even then it's often in the form of initials. Sakahira's full name lying there in uh, the actual code and doesn't require any co kind of decryption to see it. Sure beats scrolling it on the bathroom wall on his last day of the office. Interesting, his name is also has a typo. I wonder if it's just that typo or would it have a concession to keep the code humming? Good question. 
but interesting at least to do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, Nvidia. Golden days of consoles are over. So many other ways to enjoy games. All right. Nvidia yeah. recently has its had its earnings call during which is posted record breaking well earnings and talked about. Uh, talked a bit about future prospects. Uh, during the call, the CEO of Nvidia, Yen Shun, talked about the different gaming platforms as well as noted that hey, the days of past, the hey days of the past are over for the consoles. The PC has become the world's largest gaming platform. <laughs> it's always been. <laughs> <coughs> Yen Sun Huang, NVIDIA CEO. Uh, during the call, a question was put forward to Yen Sun how NVIDIA cycle the green half of the gaming duopoly compares to the consoles and what CEO replied with was interesting, also expected. But my sense is that game console platform is not likely to enjoy the heydays when it has really unambiguously the only and the best game platform to enjoy games. It's just not true anymore. There are just too many other ways to enjoy games. It's very true. He talked about how there was a time when the consoles were undoubtedly the best way to enjoy the games and something which he states is not true anymore. I found this comment pretty interesting because PC has always been one of the premier gaming platforms, unless you're talking about legends like SNES and Sega. Do I detect a, he a hint of red envy? Anyways, it was only with the advent of PlayStation 1 and Xbox in the early 2000s that the trend of gamers truly started shifting consoles. My favorite game is a PS2 exclusive, but the first games I remember playing were all on PC. The PC has become the world's largest gaming platform. China, the developing countries around the world, is a piece, uh, PC is a piece of platform they already own. They can upgrade it two, three, four times without having changed the ba basic platform, so the total cost of ownership of a gaming PC is quite attractive. It's very true. He also talks about that statistically speaking, the PC has overtaken consoles and mentions China as one of the prime examples, elaborating his point uh, a little. The reason why China's primary hub of a PC gaming is because consoles were never launched properly or on time in China. Oh, very true. Okay, and he continues going on a bit about it, but not really much more than that. More than that, Android is poised to be a great mobile gaming platform of the future. All right, but that's interesting enough, but I thought actually the PC had the market already, mostly. Yeah. All the statistics I have seen so far is that actually PC has been the primary owner Always has, always will. Yeah. Alright, uh, next up, Bloodborne update, now launching March 24th. Dear community, it is with regret that I must inform you that Bloodborne will be slightly delayed. While development continues unabated, we would like our team to deliver the best possible final experience. We were gratified by the feedback and data we received from those who participate in our limited alpha test. The extra production time will also allow us to better integrate these learnings. Bloodborne is now set to launch in North America exclusively on PS4 March 24th, 2015. Please look forward to some exciting Bloodborne news in early December. Thank you for your continued support. Nice. Nice, nice. Bloodborne is actually looking like a really nice game as well. Have you seen any of it? No, I haven't watched it actually. No, I saw uh, when I was going through some um, 2014 videos, uh, some trailers of it, and it looks really nice. So definitely anticipating that. Uh, must just get myself a uh, PS4 first. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, you know. No, you need it. All right. Uh, this is a rumor. Um, the Elder Scrolls Online is cancelled for PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Elder Scrolls Online developer Bethesda and publisher Cinemax MMO treatment due to the popular RPG series, span generations, has never had a promising future. <laughs> 
Originally releasing back in July this year, it was critically paid for lackluster content and being an overall poor game wrapped in behind both a $60 price point as well as a monthly fee. Cinemax has promised gamers that the Elder Scrolls Online will reach its console counterpart on Xbox One and PlayStation 4 later this year, promising a holiday 2014 release date. The promise is no more. Well known hacker and sleuth Super MTV has shared with the level save his insider scoop on the matter. MTW, who was partner to the world renowned hacker and Xbox One legend Super DA, has shared with us that while the game could be shipped, it will not be. Oh. MTV tells us that the Bifsidia does not want to poison the well, that the product isn't very good at the moment, and they don't want to destroy their, the image and the minds of the console audience and possibly hurt a future ma mainline Elder Scrolls release. These are MTV's words, paraphrasing what the source told him, not Bifsidia's wording. Hmm, that's too sad. The oddest part of this news is the fact that the game is in a very functional, playable state, it just being restructured with plans to be relaunched at some point as free to play with a big content update. It appears that this reason comes not only from the fact that the game is, for lack of better words, bad, <laughs> but also that the infrastructure is to support monthly subscription based access isn't properly supported. When Microsoft recently added the capabilities with Electronic Arts EA Access Service, Sony's PlayStation 4 has no form of subscription based monthly access. MTV tells us there isn't even staff working on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions of the Elder Scrolls Online, while big updates to the PC version will be patched in the completely payable console version. That's all that's done. This news comes from two months after Bessidia laid off a larger portion of their staff back in September, with reasoning being that they were scaling back development now that the game was six months into the wild. We reached into Cinemax and Bessidia for comments and will update post if we hear back. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks. So. But not really that much of a surprise. <coughs> so... Well, The Elder Scrolls was and will be a um, mediocre online game. When I played it, it was mediocre, so... Swing and miss, maybe. Hmm? Swing and a miss, maybe. Yeah, it was a bit swing and a miss. I mean, yes, there are some games that just isn't meant for MMORPGs. And trying to make a full-scale... Uh, Elder Scrolls game into an MMORPG isn't really the thing to go, I think. I would say uh, they had been better off to make a separate kind of game into an MMORPG. And add a multiplayer function instead on a real Elder Scrolls game. Yeah. Maybe, maybe co-op or something just instead of trying to make something they, they can't. Alright, and that's that for the news in the gaming world for this week. So, for the next part, we're going to go over to... Dun dun dun. Next week's game releases. Alright, and this is where we switch back and forth to YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, on Monday and uh, they will release something that's called Soul Soul Axiom. From the indie games that brought you Master Reboot, which I have never played, comes a new first person sci fi adventure game that will take you on a journey through the deepest darkest recesses of of it doesn't oh. say. Alright, let's load up the Ah, darkest recesses of your soul. Hmm. The graphics aren't Good, but they're interesting. <coughs> interesting, you might say. Hmm. Alright.
Alright, it looks I don't know. I it could, looks <laughs> It looks like some kind of platformish game. I'm not that really much impressed, but impressed enough. <laughs> Alright, Penguins of Madagascar is released for the 3DS and the Wii U, for some reason. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition is released for Xbox One, PS3, Xbox 360, PC and PS4 uh, on Tuesday. Watch Dogs is finally released for Wii U. Uh, Rabbits is making a new game. Uh, for Xbox One, PS4, and Xbox 360. I haven't seen anything on that actually. It's a completely new one. And of course that's bugging out. Uh, Shadows of Mordor is released for the PS3 and Xbox 360. Finally. <laughs> Fine. It took a couple of extra days to get it doing. Now let's see, can we see a trailer on the rabbit's invasion just to see how it looks. Oh, that's loud. All right, now, did you guys know that the Just Dance franchise actually got its start as a mini game in one of Ubisoft's Raving Rabbids games? Well, now you do. Oh, and today Ubisoft is once again now you do. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. Can you show me the trailer, please? Oh, there you Okay, so it's going to be a classical raving rabbits game. Lots of loony things and uh, a lot of uh, mini games. <laughs> All right, uh, WWE 2K15 releases a new game for the PS4 and Xbox One. Far Cry 4 is released next week. Nice on Tuesday. Uh, for PS4, Xbox One, PS3, and PS4, and PC. Uh, Adventure Time is releasing a new game, The Secret of the Nameless Kingdom, for 3DS, PC, and PS3. Uh, Never Alone, an atmospheric puzzle platform, is released for Xbox One, PC, and PS4. Let's see how that looks. Never allow. Uh, launch trailer. Nice. Rated teen for violence. Ooh. Eli. So it's about an Eskimo kid with a snow wolf. It seems. With really weird graphics sometimes. Really weird graphics. Okay. Hello, Astro. How you doing? Hmm. Yeah. 
Alright, it looks interesting enough actually. It's an indie game. Bible at Steam. So it's um It's an indie game released on Tuesday, November 18th, and uh, it's a platformer. It looks good enough. Never alone. What we're doing, we're going through next week's game releases. Uh, Little Big Planet 3 are released for PS4 and PS3. Grand Theft Auto 5 is released for PS4 and Xbox One. Escape Dead Island is released for Xbox 360, PS3 and PC. That actually looks really nice. Have you seen anything of that? No. No, it's a... Uh, it's uh, a continuation of Dead Island, but it's made with uh, the cell shading graphics of... Uh, looks kind of like um, Borderlands. So it actually looks really nice. Let's put up the trailer for that. Ah, you have to enter your birth date. Fine. You don't have the age. Enter. Rated M for mature. Rated M for mature. Deep silver. Yeah. I never knew it before now, but I've always wanted to come here. How did you know Geofarm would be here? What difference do the answers make if we can't tell them to anyone? The whole project's a failure. Ah! Listen to yourself. Those things are still out there. Don't deny what you are. Hmm. We gotta get her out of here like yesterday. Hmm. Psychological zombie apocalypse. Hiding from the ugly truth. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, my head. Wake up and save us, save us, save us, save us. Eh, seems nice actually. Uh, I wasn't too fond of the original Dead Island game, but this looks really nice actually. So interested in that. Uh, Company of Heroes 2, Arden's Assault is released for PC. Construction Simulator 2015, aren't you excited? Uh, well, you know. Yeah, definitely. MXGP, the official motocross video game, is released for Xbox 360, PS4 and PS3. A new Monopoly game, Family Fun Pack. Monopoly! We have to play Monopoly! It's released for Xbox One and PS4. If we get two more players, I would definitely be down for Monopoly. <laughs> uh, Minecraft Xbox One Edition is released on uh, Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday releases. Basketball Pro Management 2015. And Fate The Cursed King. A dungeon crawling game from Enlight Software. Ooh. So let's see what that has to offer. If we have any any trailers, no. Was first released uh, May twelfth, tenth, two thousand eleven. So I'm guessing it's a re-release for for some new platform. All right, Dragon Age Inquisition. Released for Xbox One, PS3, Xbox 360, PS4, and PC. I didn't know it was released for 360 and PS3. That's nice, actually. Uh, Watch Dogs released in the UK for Wii U. Um, lots of re-releases for other countries. The Marvelous Mistake. What the hell? What the fuzz? In the bustling heart of London, a once magnificent co art collection has been unscrupulously poached and split up among private collectors. Meet Sophia Take, the rightful heir to the misappropriated. Is it some kind of detective game? Uh, maybe. Sounds like it. Yeah, the rightful heir to the pieces. Help Sophia reclaim the inheritance to an exciting and daring adventure across the capital. Let's see what the trailer has to show. <laughs> But yeah, definitely sounds more like Wonderstruck.
Rising Star Games. That's a bit too loud. Smart, cunning, daring. The most ugly walking style I have seen in a while. Oh, well, you know. What the hell? <laughs> what the fuzz? Be smart. Don't get caught. Ah, well. <laughs> uh, no. Definitely not. Seems really weird, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Uh, Arcana Heart 3 Love Max is released for uh, PS3 and Vita in the UK. Uh, otherwise, nothing much. Uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, once again, release. I think it's the UK release. No, the UK release is there. And then it's a uh, Europe release on Friday. Super Smash Bros. for Wii is released on Friday actually. It's quite nice to be perfectly honest. Um, Pokemon Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby. <laughs> it's, that time of, it's that time of the year again. <laughs> I haven't seen anything on that so let's put up a trailer for one of them at least. Uh, can we get a video? Trailer, trailer. Yeah, I just want a regular trailer, please. There we go. That should be a good trailer. How hard can it be to find a good trailer? <laughs> really hard? Yeah, obviously. <clears throat> Doesn't really show anything of the game itself. Too bad. Okay, uh, let's do a uh, YouTube of it instead. It's usually the way to go in case you have problems finding a trailer. 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 Can't even spell. <laughs> Gotta catch them all. Pokemon. Yeah. Choose your first Pokemon! I take the one in the middle. Yeah. Oh well. Nothing. Nothing super surprising. Mega Dians discovered. Oh, you can mega evolve things. Fine. <laughs> Fine. It's like, yeah, you have the free evolution steps and the mega evolvement stage. This is getting more Digimon every time. Oh, why not? <laughs> Alright, uh, otherwise... 
Let's see. Is there anything new? Sang Freud, Tales of Werewolves. Uh, then it's the Sonic games again. We talked about last week. Persona 4 Arena Ultimax is released for Xbox 360 and PS3. Nice. Yeah, definitely. And otherwise, there wasn't anything. It's a uh, Tell Me Mortal Arena. It's a MOBA game. Once again, free to play. Too bad. I'm depressed now. <laughs> Aww. Uh, Sang Freud Tales of Werewolves is transported into a ninth century where two feuding brothers will have to put aside the differences to save their sister. Uh, let's see, is there a. Ah, there's a debut trailer. Let's see how it looks then. I don't have any hopes for it, to be perfectly honest. Even the trailer doesn't want to load. Duh. Oh, there we go. Nope, buffers. I hate GameSpot sometimes. Bonkers. And bonkers. YouTube uh, trailer trailer alert there we go this game has been greenlit by the steam community No one truly remembers what happened, but rumor has it that the devil came to town. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> Do you know how you know it's the devil? You take Jesus. yam and uh, throw it on a toast, and you throw it up in the air, and if it lands yam down, the devil is there. The Do you know where which movie that is from? Uh. It's from The Devil by um, M. Night Shyamalan. Oh. The man with the worst Sarah. plot twists ever. Being scared, you say? No, not really. Okay. Uh, not really my cup of tea. It seems it's uh, like a trap. Uh, you can make traps and everything, and um, everything just goes out to kill werewolves. And you can see it from top down, side, and the graphics are really bad. Uh, oh, that kind of game. Yeah. Okay, uh, that's all the new game releases. I would say that Escape Dead Island is definitely one on the top. Uh, it's fun that they're making a new Pokemon game again. Um, Super Smash Bros. definitely won. Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, Never Alone looked really nice, actually. For being one of those kind of games. Otherwise, there was nothing really for next week. Well, so. I get it every time. Oh no, but there's still a couple of good games. Alright, next up is the Nostalgia Review. Nostalgic. Okay, so uh, let me just move this over here. Lower the volume a bit. And uh, put this up on the next screen. There we go. Alright, so this is. Uh, is that what we're going to talk about? Metal Gear. What the fuck are we going to talk about? So this is Metal Gear. Uh, the first game in the Metal Gear Sol Metal Gear series, the prequel to the Metal Gear Solid. Uh, this is the SNES version that was released in 1987 December. Five months before that, it was re actually released for the MSX2 in the 1987. Yeah. And uh, there is a couple of differences between the games. Did you know that? 
Yeah, I've heard about it. Yeah, it isn't exactly the same. Uh, I'm just going to lower the volume a bit more here. There we go. Um, the main difference is actually that uh, SNES, the NES game doesn't have any mecha at all. While the MSSX uh, version has quite a lot of mecha. And the primary being by the end of the game where you, in the NES game, destroy a supercomputer that controls the Metal Gear. And instead, on the MSX2, you actually have to place uh, uh, around 16 plastic bombs on the Metal Gear's feet. No, that's a disappointment in the NES version, that you don't get to blow up Metal Gear. Yeah, exactly. That's what you want to do in every Metal Gear game. I want to blow it up! Exactly. Uh, otherwise, um, high alert was disabled. And that's the double exclamation mark that might appear over the heads, where you get enemies coming off from off screen. Uh -huh. And that was disabled. Uh, and you could also sneak underneath the security cameras instead, that you couldn't do in the in the MSX2. So the other difference is that in the MSX2 you had checkpoints. So if you passed a checkpoint, you would automatically respawn there. Uh, in uh, in the NES version, you instead went by the rank you had. Uh, depending on what rank you had, you respawned at different points in the game. Uh, also, the difference is that if you died in uh, the NES version, you would have still have your inventory, as contrary to the MSX version where you wouldn't. You would have to regain uh, the point, things you have gotten after the checkpoint again. So all in all, I would say that I prefer the MSX version due to its uh, higher difficulty. Yeah, because that's what you want in this kind of game. You want the challenge. Yeah. That's why you play it. Definitely. Um, also, if you get the high alert, you have to escape the whole building to get rid of it. But if you get a low alert, you can just go to the next screen, which made the whole thing of the of the next screen just uh, completed in the whole uh, in the whole game session. Yeah. Otherwise, I did not play this originally on NES. Mm. Did I? I actually played uh, Snake's Revenge. Yeah. That was my first. Yeah, I don't even remember when I first played it. I think it was a NES emulator sometime. Uh, yeah. No. I actually had Snake's Revenge on a cartridge. Ah, nice. Yeah. No, it's a nice game. It's, as I said, the first game in the Metal Gear Solid series. So, you actually play a snake in yeah. this one. Nice. Even though it doesn't look like it. Actually, the first kind of NES game where sneaking was... Yeah, was, was required. Yeah, you had to... You just couldn't just shoot everyone, like, go berserk. You had to actually... You have to actually think. Yeah, absolutely. Alright, but that's it for the Nostalgia review. I would say a 7 of 10 on that game. Yeah. It still holds up. Yeah, absolutely. And it started something beautiful. That it also did. Alright. Let's uh, go over to the top 10 then. Top 10. This week's top 10 is uh, top 10 games uh, releases on 2014. Let it be known that this list is uh, only based on trailers and information that was handed out in the beginning of the year. And it's not uh, contrary to games that has been released or will be released. So every game is fair game in this. So let's start off with number 10, The Evil Within. Woo! This game has actually been released already. And so far by the gameplay it looks really interesting. Yeah. Um, not that horrifying as I would like it to be, but still. <laughs> I thought it would be creepier. Yeah, I actually did. But it's still a, a good, scary game in itself. I really like the trailer though. 
It's but horrid. the trailers always looks yeah. nice. They're like, oh, freaking awesome, and then they're like, oh. Disappointments were had. Like the movie this trailer. Shouldn't actually watch trailers to games. They're like, oh. Uh. My game. <laughs> what happened to all these awesome things that I were expecting? <laughs> no, it's it looks really nice in the trailer itself, and the game itself wasn't that bad. So I would say no disappointments were had in itself. Just uh, too high anticipations in itself. I wasn't really that hyped for it, so I didn't really get that disappointed. No, I was a bit hyped for it because my colleagues were, were talking about it, so I was like, yeah, okay, it seems nice enough. Hopefully it will be good enough, but... Uh. Oh well. The evil within. <laughs> Alright, number 9. Dark Souls 2. This has also been out a while, and I must say, no disappointments were had with this game. The trailer looked awesome, the game itself it looks really awesome. It's definitely one of the games I have to buy in the future. Yeah, it's one hard game. Yeah, it's a one hard game, but that's also what makes it fun, actually. We all remember Dark Souls. Uh, I never played Dark Souls that much, actually. Neither did I, but I have a friend with it. Yeah. He got so angry. It's nothing to get angry at, you can rage a bit, but... I always <laughs> get back in... <laughs> Serious Sam? Eh. As I said, you can rage a bit, especially if you have people that ax you oh on. <laughs> especially if you have friends that eggs you on to the rage just because they think it's fun. What was I supposed to do? I don't know. What should I do? Should I commit suicide? Not Dark Souls. It's. Awesome. Yeah, it is. You want something that's gonna keep you up a while. Yeah? <clears throat> Alright, number eight. Witcher 3. <laughs> yeah, Witcher 3 is actually one of the games that I have uh, been looking forward to for a bit. I need to replay Witcher 1 and play Witcher 2. I haven't played the full Witcher 2, I just breezed it a bit. So, definitely do a playthrough of Witcher 1 and 2. I think I should play it with a controller. <laughs> you think? Yeah. It's definitely a controller fitted game. Uh, nice to get a crow in the eye. But no, The Witcher 3 seems to be a, becoming a really nice game. Cinematic opening trailer is real nice. I couldn't tell, sir. <laughs> well, you could watch it.
zero point three. Alright, let's skip forward a bit. Many of you might already be familiar with this guy. He's Geralt of Rivia. Uh, it's a little bit of a gameplay session of it. One of a dying cast, a professional monster I see that they isn't using the full graphic extensibilities for it. Sadly enough on the gameplay trailer. Oh well. Looks nice enough. I uh, definitely looking forward to that. Alright. Number seven. I wonder what it could be! Dragon Age Inquisition. This is also a highly anticipated game for this year. Uh, yeah. Which I really shouldn't uh, anticipate that much because Dragon Age 2 was crap. <laughs> so I hope this will be better. Dragon Age 1 was epic, Dragon Age 2 sucked balls. Balls? Yeah. So, I really hope this will be better. I mean, they have the recipe for it, so let's just hope they use it in the correct order. <laughs> it's always nice to be told that your mistake never should have been existed. <laughs> it's like, aww. <laughs> In my own face! Uh. Oh, disgusting demons. Number six. Dun, dun, dun. The division. Yeah, definitely. The division is a game that I've been looking forward to ever since I saw it on the E3 releasement. I'm looking forward to it because finally a shoot 'em up game I can play with you. Finally, <laughs> freaking <Yeah>. finally. <laughs> It's open world, it's... Uh, Did I say finally? Yes. It's tactical, it seems really nice. And um, if I had to actually compare it to something, I would compare it to Secret World. Yeah. It looks a bit like that. And... Uh, oh, I think it looks really nice actually. So, and it should be released for PC, didn't they say that now? Yeah, I believe they made the release thing. Yeah, so definitely looking forward to that. That would be a good, good change of pace. But someone's gotta be there. Someone's gotta be there. Alright, now the Division looks nice, it's an impressive game, the gameplay itself that we've seen for, from it so far is really interesting, so hopefully it will go, be as good as it looks. Alright, so down to number 5. Dun, dun, dun. Watchdog! And yes, this game is out, this game is freaking awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's definitely one of my, I'd recommend you to play this game. Yeah, we have played this, sir. Yes, we have. I haven't finished it because I'm aiming to stream it from start to finish. So I quit her somewhere around the middle, I believe. Four seconds and a clear signal. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm saving it up for when I can stream it. Okay. Same with... Uh, a lot of other games. You can become a bit overpowered too easy. Want you to know 
Oh, in the game so. itself, yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You just need to invest time and then you then you're overpowered. Yeah. That's also kinda one of the things I like in games that if you invest enough time you can become overpowered. Yeah, but this it took Yeah, it went that to... it took a little little timing like oh yeah, an it, hour or so. Yeah, I'm overpowered. I can't die. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. It was a bit of a disappointment in that area, but. But I liked it how you could finish quests and the, like in different ways. Yeah, definitely. You could pick the way you wanted, like stealth or kill them or stun them or something. Yeah. You can always choose a different route for each mission. Absolutely, and that's one of the things I really like with it. A place died for every person, I would say. Yeah, pick your poison. I will take sludge. Alright. Alright, so... Down to number four. South Park, the stick of truth. Because... <laughs> because freaking awesome game, that's why. <laughs> it's, it's South Park. It has to be uh, in the above. Yeah. It's an awesome, hilarious game with really good gameplay. I think I played this five times this year <laughs> already. <laughs> and I'm actually looking forward to playing it once again later on. Just because it's freaking hilarious. I just hope they announce some a couple of DLCs or something for it. Just to extend the gameplay itself. And the best thing about it is it sold really well. Uh, the game itself was quite popular, which means that they can actually do quite a lot more games by it. They just need to change the theme, more or less. This guy's the limitless. Yeah. This is limitless. Yeah. yeah. But anal probing, that's why. Looks like we got a fight on our hands. Princess Keeney! <laughs> Princess Keeney. Okay, uh, number three. Borderlands, the pre sequel. And yes, this is also a game I highly anticipate playing. Because in Borderlands, that's why. I'm actually looking forward to the Telltale game as well, they have announced. Uh, oh, that's loud. Uh, but I don't remember what the name was now. Uh, it's Borderlands... No. But it's a Telltale game at least. Uh, I think it's played as uh, the regular Telltale games is, with the active, uh, active scenes and everything. Which actually looks really nice to be one part of the storyline. But yeah, the, the things I've seen of the Borderlands pre-sequel is really good. Uh, the sad thing I heard is that all the laser guns sucks. Basically. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, Borderlands is a highly anticipated game as well. Alright. Number two. Far Cry 4! Because Far Cry, that's why. It's been too long since. I really should play through all the three of them. I really like the Far Cry games, so I just never get stuck when playing them. Usually start it up and then play for a while, and then it's like, nah. <laughs> and then it goes a while, and then I pick it up again, and then for a couple of hours, like, like nah. <laughs> I know. Ubisoft presents something else. Mm -hmm. Something else other than the usual crap. I know. When was Far Cry Three released? Two thousand and twelve. Far Cry 3? Yeah. Is that even... 
I'm not sure about that. Let me check, actually. Mm -hmm. As I said, it was too long. I was... It's really... Uh, 2012... November. Yeah, I thought so. So it's... Almost two years ago. Yeah. But yeah, Far Cry 4 uh, looks really nice. Um, looking forward to seeing it a little bit more. I hope it's a bit harder than Far Cry 3, but that, because that was also very easy. Yeah. As long as you open up the map and you get all the weapons, you're like, oh. Yeah, but people were like this. Okay, Far Cry 3, you will get the map editors. Yeah, but no vehicles. No. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Far Cry 4 is like, you will get vehicles. Yeah, but no map editor. No. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get both. Sadly enough. Mm. Alright, on to number one. Assassin's Creed Unity. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Especially if, when we get it both so we can co-op it because it's a co-op game. I think Wall would have an orgasm when he yeah. plays that. I think so too, You're actually. <laughs> You're saying? I still do when I play Assassin's Creed um, Black Flag. Just pick any the Assassin's Creed game and we get an orgasm. No, not Assassin's Creed 1. I didn't know. <laughs> I don't play it then. <laughs> I don't. <gasps> you don't? Nope. Aww. I played through the first one when it was released. I never touched it since then. <laughs> Just because it's so freaking repetitive. Even the dialogue is repetitive. But no, otherwise, this is Creed Unity, so far what the little things I've seen of it looks really good. I refuse to look at any gameplay, anything <laughs> right now. <laughs> because I don't want to spoil it. It's uh, one of my most anticipated games, but I really want to save it so I can uh, play it blind on stream. Because that would be the most fun way to play it. But yeah, Assassin's Creed Unity, that's my most anticipated game this year. And the good thing about saving it as well is that it will be patched and uh, most of the problems that we have seen right now will be fixed. Alright. That's the top 10 list. To go through it again, on uh, place number 10 it was The Evil Within. Place number 9, Dark Souls 2. Place number 8, The Witcher 3. Place number 7, Dragon Age Inquisition. Place number 6, Tom Clancy's The Division. Place number 5, Watchdog. Place number 4, South Park The Stick of Truth. Place number 3, Borderlands The Pre Sequel. And place number 2, Far Cry 4. And uh, on place number 1, Assassin's Creed Unity. If you have any thoughts about what should and should not be on this list, and if there's something you want to add, you can always add it in the comments on the YouTube or send us a message here on Twitch. And we can address that in the next uh, next episode. Alright. But that's it. This is it. So that's it for the top 10. Uh, next up is future plans. Uh, future plans for us. Well... Need to take a tinkle. If you need to take a tinkle, you can tinkle in a little while. Uh, no, but it's finishing up the town. Continue on with that. I'm going to continue playing Randall's Monday. Uh, I have not decided what I will play after Randall's Monday, so we'll have to see about that. <laughs> but otherwise, I will review Randall's Monday probably next Sunday after I finished it. And um, I don't think there's anything more. Do you have anything to add? No, I'm playing WoW. Yeah, you're playing WoW. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Yay! Uh, no, that's about it. Alright. So that's it for this weekend. If you have anything you would like us to do on these, these type of things, just send us a message and we'll take it into consideration. We might add it to the plan. As it is now, it's about one, one hour and a half, two hours, so we have room to add more stuff. Uh, otherwise, nothing more to add, so thank you so much, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Uh -huh.